Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling page. Today we're going to be doing some layered abstract paintings, basically just exploring mic making. So I'm starting off in a watercolour journal and I've actually masked off the edges because I wanted this sort of like a framed piece. And I am just going to be playing with a lot of different mediums. So I'm going in with onto a wet page on watercolour paper with my gloss sprays and just sort of seeing what happens when they're a little bit wet and a little bit inky um, and being really, really loose. Now I have absolutely no plans of what I'm doing on this page. I was just playing and I love these sorts of pages for this. Um, the great thing about videoing the process is you see that, oh, this looks like an absolute disaster. Oh, that looks really good. Oh no, why have you added this to that page and can you redeem it at the end? So it is quite funny to see the journey from where this started to where it finished. So now I'm just using some um, acrylic inks. First one I used was a sort of pain grey colour and now this is an indigo. Again, I've got some quite wet spots on my page and I'm also using different size brushes that I don't usually use so that was a really sort of fluffy big brush it's not one that I pull out very often in fact I just use it mostly to wipe up embossing powder but again it was like oh what will happen if I use this so as you're playing around ask those questions what if what if I do this what if I do that so now I'm going in with a little bit of gel medium. It's still a little bit wet underneath um, in some spots and that's okay. And I'm just sticking down some little bits of collage. Um, mostly translucent, so collage tissues. So this one's um, one with printed just abstract lines on it, which I thought would tie in well with sort of what I was, not that I was aiming to do anything, but you know, I knew it was gonna be liney and and so on. I also added in some pieces that had some contrasting colour. So this is just a printed tissue paper from Natalie May um, with sort of orangey pinky colours which I knew would be a an opposite to the colours I had on the page already so adding in a little bit of warmth. I'm also drawing this off as I go along because I'm impatient. Lots of people could wait but you know I have no patience whatsoever. Because I liked the sort of contrast of the oranges on here, I um, went in with my Stabilo Woodies with another orange, mostly to try and blend those bits of paper in, because while I put them down and I wanted the pop of color, it was a bit too square for me. So you can see me overlapping the marks. I'm being quite scribbly and I'm making sort of just lines and circles. You can see I actually tore some of that paper at the top. It's okay, just adds texture. Um, so I'm just seeing what I'm doing. So now I'm going in with a little bit of white because I put so much color on here, I want to add back in some white space. Well, it's quite good um, at some stages if you grab out some white and black to help you control your page and where it's going. You don't need much, but it just helps lead your eye around the page. Now, as you can see with what I'm doing, you could stop at any stage. So I'm gonna keep going because it's me. Um, but again, this is really good um, if you video your work because you can sort of go back and go, oh, I liked it when I got there and then I took it too far. Um, the other way you can do this is sort of after you add a medium, take a photo and then add another medium and take a photo. So you've got this sort of pictorial reference of where you liked um, or what didn't, what worked and what didn't work, um, which is often very good for the, um, the future when you're doing it again. So you can see I'm also going back in with some other uh, mediums I've used before. So I um, had my... Um, blue that I used previously of the gloss sprays um, and put some white making on there and then I decided I was going to have a big splash of orange on it. Now I, as I put this bit on I thought mm, I'm not sure about this but I got this cool effect with the gesso. So um, gesso can give you a really cool resist especially if you're using something like gloss spray. So you can see where I wiped over that white stenciling and that's popped it out a bit and it's broken that big part of the um, orange on the page. I also decided to go in with a little bit of marine and some mic making, again to push that orange back. It was 
I liked it, I liked the contrast of it, but it was a bit too much, I was a bit heavy handed with it. So this is where you sort of problem solving part of your brain switches on I suppose. You can see I've also dabbed away some of those bits of the marine so I can still see that um, the white stenciling coming through the middle. Because everything got a little bit dark now I wanted to add some lighter colour back in again. And again I'm using quite loose brush strokes. I'm using different size brushes as well so um, you know I used quite thick brushes now it's sort of a flatter brush and because it's me and I had paint left over, I'm going in and doing a little bit of mic making across my page. Again, I look sort of at that turquoise and go, mm, what, what were you thinking? So I had some of this extra ink left on the page and I just went in with my finger and used that as a mic making tool as well. Um, so again, any layers you put on top is going to push it to the background by putting those black dots over the top that's broken up that line of blue to, to make it go on the page. Now at this stage I was cringing inwardly thinking oh I don't have any white space on this page it's it's I've lost sort of that stenciling at the background um, so I decided to put some white space back in again by painting just plain gesso on it and it seems a bit weird in the fact that you know you've put all these layers on and now I am painting over them but you can see I'm sort of removing some of the spaces so I can see what's going on underneath. I'm also softening off the edges. Now the reason, one of the reasons I can do this is while I have used some water soluble mediums in the background, um, most of them are acrylic, most of them were dry, so I was able to be a bit heavy handed with my wet wipe to sort of soften those lines somewhat so it wasn't quite as harsh. I then went back in with some blue ink again and um, with a really fine brush this time to sort of get that line work back in again. Um, just to make it look a little bit tied together. So the whole point of having sort of the lines on the page helps to draw your eye through the page. Because I'd lost a lot of that orange, I wanted to go back in and add some more again. So I decided instead of putting a big switch of it across the background, I would just use little bits and little drips here and there. Um, and I really, at this stage, I was thinking, I was feeling more confident about the piece again. Um, but I've always been of the opinion when you start to get a little bit worried when you think I've made an absolute mess here is usually when you're getting close to the end um, and it probably needs a few layers more to tie it all back together again. So you can see I've put, popped in some of that turquoise again just to balance up the colours. So once I've finished then it's time for the big reveal. Now one thing that I have learnt from experience is when you're trying to take washi off heat it up and to get a nice clean line but you can see by having that frame around the piece um, it adds that white space back in again. So this is a close-up of all those layers and lines Yes, the back layers are completely gone. You can hardly see the collage on that anymore but I know they're there and you can sort of in the um, distance sort of peep through those layers and see them. So this is just a really really fun piece of playing with different mediums, finding out what they do and don't do and just having fun. So I hope you have a go at this um, and see what you can come up with. Thanks so much for watching, until next time, bye for now.